Hi, Caleb with Brownells here. In today's From the Vault, we're going to be taking a look at the SCAR series of rifles. So the SCAR is one of those rifles that was born out of necessity or um, I should say want for a more modular rifle and the for the United States Special Forces. So United States Special Operations Command started the SCAR program in 2004 and uh, they just really wanted a new modular rifle that could be adapted for pretty much any situation. And in 2007, the testing was completed and the FN SCAR was born of that. So the SCAR itself is an acronym, S-C-A-R. It stands for Special Operation Forces, which is the S, however you want to rationalize that in your mind. Uh, Combat Assault Rifle, so C-A-R. So there you have the SCAR. So yes, A-R, even though the civilian and semi-auto version st still is a SCAR, uh, it's kind of weird because the assault rifle is by definition select fire, um, but that's neither here nor there. So the SCAR itself comes in a few different versions, um, and you can break that down even further by talking about the military versions and the civilian versions. So let's talk about the military variants first. So the main two you have there are going to be the L and the H, or the Mark 16 and a Mark 17. So the 16, or the L, is going to be chambered in 223.556. The H, or the uh, Mark 17, uh, that's going to be primarily 308, but it's also set up so you can pretty much set it up in any other caliber. Uh, I say any other caliber, any of your main military calibers. Uh, so your 308, uh, you can even do it in a 6.5 Creedmoor. It was even kind of, I, the I, original idea was even kind of 7.6239 or 6.8 SPC as possible in them, which is pretty cool. Um, and moving on from there, uh, I'll give you another brief history here. The 16, or the L, the SCAR L is no longer used. They kind of phased that out, and they're only running the H now. Um, and they can actually run a 223.556 in the H platform, or that heavier platform, uh, which is kind of cool. The reason they did that is so that they can have more modularity in the heavier platform uh, and just kind of not even bother producing or buying the ones that weren't going to get used as much. Uh, so, moving on from there, talking about the civilian versions, you're going to have your SCAR 16 and then your SCAR 17, 17 being the heavier 308 platform. And then you also have this gun set up in a designated marksman type setup, which I have here. This is the SCAR 20S, and this one uh, comes in either 308 or 65 Creedmoor. So pretty cool, very modular gun. Uh, you can see it has a fully adjustable stock and cheek piece. Uh, more adjustable than the one on this one here, which we'll actually go over. So the one we have on the table here is gonna be your SCAR 16 and Flat Dark Earth. So I'll start from the butt and go all the way to the muzzle and just kind of give you a brief rundown of the components of this firearm. So the butt stock itself is fully adjustable. You have a six position stock here. And your cheek piece can also be raised or lowered. Now the stock is foldable and can be fired from the folded position if you so desire. And the lower portion or your lower receiver here is all polymer as well as your stock. But your upper receiver is going to be aluminum. Now this one here has a uh, attachment on the front end. This is made by the Kinetic Development Group. This usually doesn't come on the scars, but it's a great attachment to add to. Uh, you have a full length pick rail on top, short stroke gas piston, and it also comes in multiple barrel lengths. So kind of jumping back to your military versions here, your SCAR L, or uh, your Mark 16, is gonna come in a 10, 14, or 18 inch primarily. And then your heavy versions, your SCAR H, uh, those are gonna come in a 13, 16, and 20 inch. So a lot of modularity there. The barrels are easy to change. Uh, it doesn't have to be like a super in-depth armor level changing. You just undo the two screws on each side and then you can remove the barrel and set the new one in. The barrel extension is set up kind of like an AR-15 so you don't really have to worry about headspace which is very nice on these as well. So user changeable barrels. Uh, as I said before, it was designed to be modular, and that's exactly what it is. It's also marketed as, full, as being fully ambidextrous as far as the controls go, but um, 
I kind of got to disagree a little bit on that. So your selector lever is indeed fully ambidextrous and it's nice that it's a short throw there. You don't have a full 90 degree throw. Your magazine catch or magazine release is fully ambidextrous as well. But the bolt catch is only on the left hand side. So I can't really say the controls are fully ambidextrous based off of that. So on the SCAR 16s, or the 223556 version, it takes standard AR magazines, which is nice and easy to use there. But the heavier versions do take a proprietary magazine uh, for the 308 and 65 Creedmoor. Uh, so another cool thing about this, so your front sight is gonna be fixed onto the gas block up here, and it is a flip up front sight. And your rear sight here, is just a standard sight that mounts on a rail, so you can, it's, it, this height of it is set up so it'll work with uh, most any AR-15 sight, or height sights, uh, so you can change that out if need be. And the charging handle is another big uh, controversial part of this firearm. So it does have a reciprocating charging handle, which I'll show you here. So as you fire, that charging handle does move with the bolt. Uh, so FN has sense, come out with a non-reciprocating version and a kit to retrofit one that already has a reciprocating charging handle. So um, that's kind of the biggest complaint of this gun and it has been addressed. So that is the SCAR series of firearms. Uh, so if you have any questions or you'd like to add anything to this, I know we just kind of scratched the surface a bit as we <laughs> sometimes always do, but uh, feel free to leave us a comment down below or give us a call on the tech line. Join us next time when we bring you another gun from the vault.